is eight o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is the DJ round table. And of course, I have some great other DJs here as well. You know, it's always great. We have people from different parts of the country here, different ideas, different thinking, different ways of doing things. And one thing I do have to say is thank you for watching the show. And thank you so much for comments and so forth you put down below. And we want to read your comments. We want to hear your questions. We want to make sure that we are answering things that we've, if we can, and give us our two cents how we go about doing things. It doesn't doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's how we go go about doing it. If you could do me a favor, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you hit click the follow button. Make sure you, if you're on Instagram or on any of the social media, you follow us on there. As well, if you're on Twitch, make sure you follow, hit the follow button there. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel because always content like this coming out, plus other things, gig logs, and other fun things on there. Speaking of YouTube, everyone here has YouTube channels. So make sure you go down below. All their links are down below to their YouTube channels. So you can click directly and go into their YouTube uh, page and make sure you follow them. Give them lots of thumbs up and lots of love. And one other thing you could do, tell a friend, tell another DJ about the show. Bring them in, have them, you know, watch a couple episodes because the fact that there's a lot of information that we try to give, we try to make sure it's easy, simple, and fun. With that said, let's get, start with the show. Uh, we're going to continue on a little bit from last week. Uh, we were talking uh, last week about um, inclement weather and if something happened. Uh, and one of the one of the uh, uh, watchers for the show uh, chimed in and ask some questions, and they'd like to know some verbiage uh, that, that you have in a contract. Uh, and I answered uh, directly to him, but I will answer this. On our contract, uh, we have, if anything is deemed unsafe, so inclement weather would be included in unsafe, but that includes anything else that we feel it's not working right. You know, it's something that it could cause, you know, injury to us, to our equipment or to everyone there at the wedding. So we try to make sure that we err on the side of caution and look at and go, okay, fine and great. This is something that is unsafe. We need to stop right now, maybe reevaluate. It could be something simple as spilling liquid on the floor, stop the dancing, ask the staff to come out and wipe the floor up. Or it could be as egregious as a medical emergency or something else that you need to stop everything for and maybe that's the end of the night. That's something else you need to talk to your bride and groom or your customer and make sure they understand that, hey, you know what? If things get hairy, especially with weather, communication is a key thing. That way they're not like, oh, my God, you know. And I have no problem whatsoever keeping the money I'm already paid because I'm there already set up all the time I set, uh, I spent sunny up. All the time I'm there already, already, you know, making music, doing stuff. I can't control the weather. That's beyond my control. I already gave so many hours. And again, most again, most times you look at it, people will understand that. If someone doesn't understand that, then you know, there's recourses for them to go through. But I wanted to ask uh Dwayne, Mr. Dixon. He wasn't here last week. And I'm gonna start with you, sir. Um, what are some of the things that uh you put in your contract to kind of uh buffer you in case of inclement weather or dangerous things happening on or at an event for you actually i found a contract that kind of like has that but it's different than the one that i looked at the last time because i use honeybook and i know they had like contract um templates and all that but this one says the client agrees to assume full responsibility for any and all damages that may occur be caused by them or their guests that involves the DJ's property or equipment or the DJ. In the event of circumstances deemed to present a threat or implied threat of injury, injury or harm to the DJ or the equipment, me sci-fi entertainment, which is me, reserves the right to cease the performance. And then later on, it goes down to, um, the rain or shine. Oh, it is understood that if this is a rain or shine event, the client must provide overhead shelter for the performance area. 
Me Sci-Fi Entertainment reserves the right in good faith to stop or cancel the performance should the weather pose a potential danger to him, the equipment, or the audience. Every effort will be made to continue the performance. However, safety is permanent um, in all decisions. Okay, so that, that's exact verbiage from your contract. And I'm sure you communicate also, you're, you're always looking at, if you're doing an outdoor event, looking at the weather, seeing what's going on. You know, we you communicate, I'm sure, with your, your clientele, um, what's happening. And, you know, the, the, the one other thing also you got to look at is, you know, how do you communicate? What do you do to put the expectation on to the customer? Uh, asking the customer, um, questions, you know, what is their plan B? What is their plan C? And making sure they have a, you know, detail kind of a detailed plan saying, okay, fine, great. If you're doing an event outside, be it a barbecue, be it a, a wedding, be it whatever, what is your uh, next step to go to? If you're there, you're set up, you know, okay, fine, great. If you're not, not taken out of the vehicle, you know, I didn't have to lift a finger, you know, I didn't even leave my house. Okay. Do you want to reschedule it for another day? Do you want to do something else? You know, especially an event you could reschedule, such as like a car show or something like that. Okay, hey, you know what? I, I won't do this week. Next week, I'll do it. I won't charge you for next week. So something like that you could see. Uh, Mr. Jeff Johnson, uh, for you, I know you answered on uh, inside YouTube there. You answered the, uh, the part of the question. But there's anything else that any other words of wisdom that you have as far as your contract and how to – um, how to word things to make sure that people are protected for inclement weather or other uh, items going on at a event. Uh, you know, mine's very similar. Um, it's um, it just states that uh, you know, rain or shine event. You know, we we will uh, attempt to uh, you know continue playing. However, we do need to be covered. Equipment is expensive, and uh, it needs to be protected. Um. Lightning is the one thing that I reserve the right uh, to shut down an event or at least shut down the music. Um, and nobody wants to be outside in lightning. And, uh, you know, and I think it's, you know, pretty standard across the board. Everybody's in agreement with that. No one really wants to be outside when it's raining, uh, quite frankly. So, you know, yeah, there's always a plan B. Uh, I don't go to an event without a plan B if I'm outside or am covered. So, you know, I, I stay up to date with the weather. And, um, and, you know, just do the best I can. Okay. And then uh, DJ Salsas, I know out in California, you guys love doing a lot of outdoor events. Um, is there any other additional words of wisdom you have for your contract out there? Or like weather? Um, I don't, I mean. Or anything else that goes awry at a wedding that is, uh, you know, basically unsafe. You know, let's say someone decides to you know do something stupid and light uh, a table on fire or something i'm just throwing scenarios out there i hope it never happens but you never know sometimes people do dumb things um i just no i mean the only thing i have in there is i don't have anything about stopping the performance other, other than you know when the end time is reached but you know, mine is just this DJ will take reasonable safeguards to protect their equipment. However, any damage or theft occurring to equipment because of negligence will result in client being held responsible for damages or lost item or to replace broken equipment, same new equipment. And we provide liability insurance. That's all I have. I don't really, I mean, yeah, I don't really have anything for tents or whatnot. I mean, luckily we have nice enough weather here to not worry about it too much, but uh, luckily I, yeah, I, been pretty knock on wood been pretty gifted with respectful crowds and the only time something's other ever been destroyed or that i've had to get replaced they paid for it you know right there they just whooped out some cash they're like how much is it so and that's that's one thing you don't want your equipment damaged or anything like that that's that's a big thing and again we all as uh djs invest a lot of money in our equipment and we want to make sure we protect that investment and, you know, be it lightning, be it rain, be it whatever, we don't want to damage that equipment. So going back to some more comments here from the last video, uh, one of the comments was actually to you, uh, Matt, uh, talking about the sound levels. And I, I know that you are very adamant on making sure stuff is 
loud that you feel that you know loud is is great stuff like that i'm on the camp kind of like brian s rad and kind of like some of the other djs like uh mikey mike here said that you know having a hot dance floor is great and having a, a warm room so people could talk i that's what i prefer but every dj is a little different it is there a is there a event or a um wedding or a party that you would do that if they came to you and said, hey, you know what, you cannot go over 100 decibels, would you still do that? Or would you say, no, I'm not the DJ for you? Um, well, it depends on the decibel limit. If if it's if it's less than like 95, no, I'm not interested. Um, it's uh, Music has to be loud, and you got to have a good, powerful dance floor with hitting bass and clear highs and a well-balanced sound. Like, I'm not just saying scream it uh you know anybody that brings their k12.2 is like you know you can't just blast those with no low end but uh you know you gotta have a, a nice balanced full sound and you need to have that energy on the dance floor and if you're below like 95 uh on the dance uh, that's pretty i i wouldn't do anything that's below 90 like if if and and if they enforce it if it's like a decibel limit at the property line that's a little different like if we're indoors but uh, if they're like, oh, at, at no time can the sound level be above X, Y, Z. And it's just like, what's the point then? Like, why are these people getting married? And why didn't you tell them this? And I guarantee in their marketing, oh, we've never had an issue with our DJs in the past. It's always been plenty loud. And I'm like, well, I'm not other DJs, okay? Other DJs that bring Evolves or, uh, you know, some crappy speakers. Like, I'm the one who brings subwoofers and bass and it's going to sound like a concert in here. Like that's part of my performance. And if you're telling me I can't do that, then I feel like I'm kind of robbing the couple a little bit of what they paid for because they're paying for a full concert style experience. Uh, so that's kind of on me. I, I don't know. I, I, well, then I again, like that, that's, that's a level you feel you, you need to provide for your customers. And again, every DJ does things differently. So there's no right or wrong answer on this. If you feel that's best for your customers and that's what you are bringing that that's what you bring to your customers uh jeff on you far as you know sound levels and stuff like that uh, i don't know if you ever dealt with a venue that had a sound limiter uh, i know i talked to a few djs that have had venues actually have sound meters and there's a, a a light system that you know basically tells you green yellow red when it hits red it turns the power off in your dj area i've heard of that i've not run into it personally but i've heard about systems like that at venues if you're seeing something like that, is that a venue that you would want to go to? Would you want to, you know, try and see work with them? Would you talk to the venue? What would you do with a venue has some strict sound restrictions? What do you do then? Well, you work with them. I mean, you know, if, it is, if it's a wedding, it's like a couple is paying you to uh, to DJ. Uh, they they should know that up front that that is the deal. And if that if they're aware of it and they're fine with it, I'm fine with it. They're paying me to do what they've asked me to do. Uh, if you get if they're paying me like uh, Solstice, you know they're expecting a concert, uh, and then they're unaware that you know the venue has a sound level restriction. You know that's a different story. Then you've got to you know either team up with the couple and go up against the venue, or you're going to have to let the couple know that this is not my doing. This is the venue's doing. The the only thing I've ever come across was a. Uh, an ordinance or a sound sound ordinance at a barn uh, event that I did last fall. And, you know, this barn was out in the middle of a pasture 20 years ago. But now there's a community, there's a neighborhood, you know, probably 75 yards from it, 50 to 75 yards. You know, it's the backyards of maybe three or four homes in a cul-de-sac. And so they uh, said in the the meeting when I went when I went to uh, scope it out, you know, I, I can't remember what the the decibel level was restriction. It may have been like a hundred or ninety five. I can't remember, but I couldn't go over a certain amount, and I had to be cut off, dead cut off at ten o'clock. You know, and I was fine with that. The, the people that hired me were fine with that. And, uh, you know, I've got an app on my phone that uh, it shows DB levels. It's nowhere near accurate, but it's uh, it works enough for me. And if you know how to work it, and I'm sure Solstice knows how to work it, too, you, where you put that can uh, can dramatically lower the sound levels, what it's seen. So, 
you know, you can still crank it a little bit and show them, oh, yeah, well, look back here where I'm standing, right here where I'm standing, it's only 88 decibels, you know. Uh, so, but if, yeah, if you get out right out there and put it one meter in front of your um, your top, yeah, yeah you're going to get a little bit louder. But, you know, that, that's the only thing I've ever dealt with and not a big deal. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not there to uh, do a solstice performance of, uh, you know, a concert. I'm there just to provide music. And uh, for this situation, it was there was some dancing. There wasn't a lot. There was uh, maybe an hour, an hour, 20, 30, maybe at the most of some dancing. And there's only maybe 20, 25 people dancing, you know, out of out of 100, 125 people. You know, they were there to win prizes. It was a uh, it was an event uh, to uh, uh, help uh, one of the football um, uh, junior, or junior football uh, places in the area, and they had all these giveaways, and uh, uh, you know that's what people were there for. Music was a side event; it was not a wedding. So, but weddings are different. You know, you, you got to provide a reception. You've got to have music, and you've got to you got to play it at a decent level to get people on the dance floor. It, you got to give a vibe to it and you got, you got to provide for that. But, you know, again, it, it's, it's one of the things that uh, some venues I, I've dealt with a few venues that had very heavy sound restrictions and they would uh, basically uh, the police came there. The police would find you if you went over like 65 decibels at the sidewalk, what the sidewalk was maybe a hundred feet away from the dance floor and a dance floor is out on a porch. It was, this is a home in Oak Park, Illinois. Um, it is a, uh, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright designed home and it's a historical, uh, place. It's owned by the park district of Oak Park and they have weddings there. And I haven't done one there in a few years. Uh, but cause the staff changed and the new staff came and they had their favorite DJs, but, we had it down to a science because of the sound restrictions. We didn't want, could you hear the music out there? Sure. Was it at 65 decibels? I mean, you know, again, cars driving by made more noise than the than music was. You could hear it, but it wasn't crazy, but people would still call the police. Police would come out, see either Tracy or, you know, come out, uh, do it themselves and check the volume levels. And, you know, at 10 o'clock, kind of same thing like you ran into at 10 o'clock. That's it. No more. After 10 o'clock versus an indoor event, you know, it's totally different. Now, Dwayne, you out there in Ohio, again, I, I've heard of facilities. I've not seen a facility with it, but I've heard of facilities that have sound meters at inside the room where you're at. And they have little lights that come on. And it'll tell you if you're, if you're too loud, it hits red, it turns off the power to your DJ area. Uh, do you, would you do an event, a, a venue like that, or would you forego it? Or would you, you know, work with the venue and work with the couple and make sure that you follow the, uh, what the requirements are at the, at the venue? Yep, I have. Um, the 50th birthday party I did back in November, they had it at, at in the lower level of a pizzeria. And so the manager was like, the music can't be so loud that they can hear it upstairs, but it wasn't so much how loud it was. They they were more worried about the um the subwoofers. They just didn't want that that booming sound. And then a month later, I did a family reunion that had it like in this. It was like an old store storefront, and the person that rented that out um, told me that I couldn't have like any bass. So that's why I'm glad I kind of like got my column of rays because my um, speakers would make the dance floor loud, but it wouldn't be so loud that if you were out, you know, on the outside, you could still compensate. So, and if I really wanted to uh, make it more bassy, I just bring my subwoofer. But yeah, I ran into that. But then with my column of rays, it took care of that. It made the dance floor loud and the outside quiet enough for them to compensate. And I, I know that, um, like I have, I have LD systems, uh, Maui fives. I have uh, JH RCF. I know that the line arrays, uh, and I know Jeff, he's got LD systems, um, the twenty H, right? And uh, Dwayne, you got a couple. Uh, which, which one you got for which? Uh, I had the, I had the uh, guitar center harbinger. I had to get something okay, on a no, budget harbinger. And again, mm -hmm. the the subwoofer. I think it's eight inch sub on that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's it's equal to the Maui fives. I use the Maui fives. I just used this past weekend. I'm using this coming weekend. A smaller venue, hundred and I think 110 people for this coming weekend. Last weekend was 85, 90. And those little eight inch woofers give a nice little base. It's not going to hit you in the chest and make your chest bleed, but it hits you nicely. I never had a problem with a venue saying that it's too loud. I never had a problem with anyone coming to me saying I'm too quiet. Uh, you know, to me, clarity is everything. Uh, having that uh, kick in the chest base, like what like Matt does, again, that's that's his that's his stick, that's his thing. I, I don't fault him for that. Again, I, I, some of the some of the things I wish I had a big 20, 21 inch, you know, dual twenty ones or or a system like that, because it would be cool. It would be cool to do at some uh, some venues and some events. But also, I look at hey, you know what? I I think that with the right balance and stuff like that. I again, I never had anyone complain that you know it was too quiet, too this, too that. I, I think it's it's personal preference, and that's why I, I go back to this and say, you know, again, uh, Matt wants to do whatever Matt wants to do. He does what's best for his customers and his business, and I I don't fault him one bit. And again, if I had a chance to, if I could fly out to California and do a wedding with Matt, I would do it in a heartbeat with him. Not a problem because I like Matt, and, I, and again, I would do a wedding with any one of you guys. Be your wingman, not a problem. Uh, because the fact that you know, I like all you guys, and that's why you, you know, you know, it, it's it's one of the things we kind of share a lot of things. But again, we differ in how we do things, how we approach uh, item. That's again, that's why we have this show to show their differences. And this is not be up a matter of that. This is Matt. Matt, it, I want Matt to be able to say, hey, this is why I do stuff. This is what other people do. It doesn't mean he's right or wrong. It means that's what Matt does. So that's one of the things I want everyone to know that, you know, again, I read the comments. Um, and again, I agree with part of it. And again, the other part is that Matt's business, he could do what he wants to do. And I give him, I get, I support him 100%. And, you know, again, he's a professional. He's got many years of doing this and he's got many happy customers. I don't think he has any unhappy customers whatsoever. Just like the rest of us, we all do our best. You know, if it's a 50th birthday party in a bomb of pizzeria or it's a, you know, a wedding or a graduation party or a school uh, event, we want to make sure we get the best possible. So my next question, kind of the first one kind of leads into the second one. When you get contracted for an event, do you contact the venue that you're going to or go out there and do a site survey? So I'll tell you what I do. And then I want to hear from you guys. Um, I always at least give a phone call. I always look at Google and Google Maps, look at pictures. People have posted pictures on there. I always give a phone call a few weeks out and talk to the venue manager, talk to the person who is the contact point there, ask questions. You know, are you providing a table? Do I need to provide a table? Uh, what What's the power situation? Is there an outlet right there? You know, and even with that, you have things that could change because the DJ night before could have blew out the outlet or whatever. You always got to be prepared for those what ifs by trying to gather as much information as possible. If I have a lot of doubt on something or I'm unsure on something, I will go there. Tracy and I will go out, take a, you know, we'll say, hey, we want to schedule an appointment to go do a site survey, take a look at the event uh, space and say, okay, fine, great. This is this, is this, this is that. I always find out beforehand where to load in, where to load out, uh, what I always verify what time it could be there at. If they need a copy of our insurance, because some venues ask for insurance, uh, I always ask a bunch of questions. So I usually talk to them at least 20 minutes to a half hour to get some basic stuff. And for them to know that we're coming in and that we're partnering with them, we want to follow the house rules. Because the last thing I want to do, I don't want to be reinvited back to a venue and put on the bad DJ list. I always say that because I don't want to be in a bad DJ list. So I'm going to start off with uh, Jeff. When you deal with whatever the event is, fill blank in whatever the event is, what do you do uh, with the venue? Do you contact the venue? Do you go to a site survey or what, what's your uh, way of working a venue? Yeah, I do pretty much what you just suggested and what you you do. I do a site survey unless I've been there before. Uh, if I've been there before, then I make sure where the setup is, it, it, where they're putting me. Uh, I usually bring my own uh, you know, setup. I don't usually use their table. 
Uh, many times they will provide a table. There will be a table there that I'll have to get someone to move or put away, you know, hide somewhere. That's the only problem. Uh, sometimes they uh, just assume, oh, he's got to have a table, <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, the outlet uh, is important. Outlets, if possible, uh, and preferably on different circuits. But uh, that's usually, you know, it's it's rare to find that in in a lot of facilities, um, at least close by. Uh, next big, next biggest thing for me is load in, load out. Um, am I going to be going up steps, carrying anything, or uh, is it going to be an easy, you know, wheel it straight in, straight into the doors? Uh, and you know, that's pretty much it. But basically, the understanding, you know, with the couple or with the person that hired me is where I'm setting up, and that changes sometimes. I mean, that changes, you know, sometimes day before, you know, and uh, so, yeah, it, it's just a simple site survey. We all do it. Okay. And uh, DJ Bradley, he just came from a car show. He's probably also eating a little bit too. So we're going to give him a minute or two, let him get in there, eat his uh, get rubies, eat his rubies. Is it a burger, hot dog or other? Double cheeseburger. You know those finer um, Chicago-style corner mom-and-pop cheeseburger joints that you go yep. to when, at like 3 in the morning when you've yeah. been working all night? Best burger in town. But they're only open through the summer, and tonight was their first car show of five in the summer. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah. we'll let you enjoy your meal a little bit, and we'll get back to you uh, in a few seconds. So please enjoy. Don't let us bother you. Matt, on reaching out to a venue... Do you uh, give a phone call? Do you do a site survey? Do you? Uh, I what do you don't. Do? I, I don't ever um, do site surveys unless they're going to pay me. Um, I don't feel they're necessary, really. Um, if it's a complicated setup and we're doing something special and unique, maybe. But um, um, not often. Hold on. Uh, but I do, I do sometimes like if it's a big, big setup like our our dual subs or the bigger trussing package. I will ask the venue like if there's a spider box or if they know what the power situation is. Most of the time, they have no idea, or they say, "Oh yeah, there's plenty of plugs back there," and they don't know what's on what circuit. So uh, I have plenty of extension cords and and my little circuit queue to work around that. But um, only if it's like up an elevator, which I charge more for if we can't load directly in. Um, if it's a big package and it's like a small elevator, but other than that, like I'm pretty adaptable and I show up early enough just to be shit on the safe side. Um, but I don't, a lot of where I DJ is not like I could just stop by there. And also like, it's just not my, I, I've DJed a lot of these venues before. And what's great is a lot of them now have like, you know, you can just Google them and there's 360 views on Google that you can just, you know, view the whole thing with. So that makes it easy. Do you call and verify like where you load in, load at, load out at, or uh, you copy your insurance or anything? Usually, the coordinator provides that, like in their timeline email. Um, I don't really have like, or I'll just like show up and then they'll say, "Oh yeah, just load in for here." So uh, I'm usually among the first to show up anyway. So it's I kind of just park and load. It's only tricky when it's like if I'm in downtown LA or downtown San Diego. That's when I like. I don't do a site visit, but I will like try to make a point of, you know, where do I, uh, where am I supposed to park? Is there room for a trailer? This and that. So that's when it gets a little tricky because there's there's like one or two venues I've had to rent a cargo van because there's just not room to pull a trailer into their loading dock or reverse it or whatever the case may be. Okay, Dwayne in Ohio, do you uh, when you deal with a venue and con a contract comes in from a customer, they said, hey. We're going to have you DJ our blank, fill in whatever it is. Uh, do you contact the venue? Do you do a site survey? How do, you, how do you go about doing that, getting ready for that venue? Most of the time, I go out there, go and see the um, venue so I can see where to park, where I want to move my stuff in. Um, sometimes I might take a picture of the area and so I can go back and like kind of like talk to the client about where they want to have me set up so I can have a visual so I know exactly what to kind of like expect so I don't have surprises. And then it's no more than to introduce myself and get acquainted to the um, person that I need to contact or, you know, 
that runs the place if I have a question if I, and I can't get to the client. Okay. Finally, DJ Brantley, again, tired from the car show he was just at. Go to show you that, you know, we are working DJs. We are doing stuff. And he happened to have a car show today. Enjoying a delicious oh, yeah. double cheeseburger. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, sure, yeah. not, not as good as uh, uh, some of the places here in Chicago, but I'm sure it comes out a good close second, you know, as your home food. Oh, um, yeah. I love the place. And so... I- when you go to a venue, again, I, I know you're always a few venues all the time, but this is for a venue that you haven't been to before. You know, if you doing an event, fill the blank in. Even the venue today, you're there. And again, you, you said they only opened in the summertime. Do you contact a venue? Do you do a site survey? Do you look at Google Maps? What What is your, uh, your process of dealing with a venue for the first time going there? Or even you haven't been there for a while. See, I, I will do I will contact the venue first and foremost. If I've never been there, I want to know where I'm loading in, where I'm setting up at, because I'm gonna tell them straight out my setup doesn't let me have a corner. Cool. And, or if uh, cu- my couple like the one I would get up in loyal there, which was just a headache, I had to strip down even though I'd verified with the venue what I had for space. So more often than not, I'm going to call the venue, go through my like how much gear I'm bringing in, how long it's going to take me to set up at a minimum, and then find out the other end of it. How late do I have to be off property? With that, do you want me calling last call at X time? How does your timeline work for closing? And I'll also make sure that all adds up to the same timeline that photographers have or anybody else I have to work with for the day. If I can take a quick site check at a venue, by all means, I'm all about it. But more, like you said, more often than not, I'm only at about four or five venues. And the only time I really have to contact those venues, like for celebration this weekend, what color are the tablecloths and accents to the tables or uh, things of that nature. So I can, you know, figure out what my lighting is going to be, what I'm going to wear and all that good stuff. And how many tables are there so I know how big of a setup I actually have to have, all that good stuff. So, yeah, I definitely want to know what I'm getting into. Okay. And uh, I'm going to follow a second question, what we were talking about a little earlier. One of the things uh, I wanted to say also that uh, I know you're in love with the LD system speakers that you've uh, switched over to uh, for your mains uh, on the uh, recommendation from DJ Salsis uh, for uh, uh, for your main speakers. Uh, so you're digging them very much. I've seen some great pictures of them. Hopefully they're uh, filling in celebrations very nicely and that uh, it gives you everything you need. So the second question um, I have, which is the first question we originally started off with kind of, is if you have a venue that is restricted on sound, you know, a customer says, hey, this is the venue. This is where I'm at. They have a 95 decibel limit or they have... I've heard about, I have not seen it personally, but I've heard from other DJs. They have a meter on a wall, ceiling, whatever, that has little lights on it. Green light, you're good. Yellow light, you're getting a little loud. Red light comes on. It turns the power off to your area. And you're not allowed to you know, be over the sound limit. And they're worried about subwoofers. So they tell you one subwoofer or no subwoofers. Is that an event you would do? Or you would say, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not the right DJ for you. You may well go on to someone else. How would how would you handle something like that? Someone saying it, it's a sound restricted venue. I've actually been at a couple. One of them did didn't kill the power, but they had they were restricted to sixty five decibels, at I want to say a hundred hundred yards away from where we were set up, or a hundred yards from their property line, basically. And they had wired in a little red light that you had to have by your DJ booth. I chose to keep mine on the floor behind my behind my uh, totem that day. So I could see it, but it didn't affect anyone else. And I just dealt with it because it was something that had come up literally the month before I'd gotten there. That they had a new neighbor take over the property across the way from them who were just, you know, that kind of person. And there's been a couple other ones where they're like, and one of them I just don't go back to anymore. And it, 
part and parcel of the you know elevator issue, third floor of a building, it did break the last time I was there. And they're like, you can come back tomorrow. I'm like, I'm leaving town tonight. I have to get all my gear down the stairs. So I had to carry subs and everything down three flights. And that was a big pain. But they don't allow subwoofers. And unfortunately, I had to have them because I didn't wasn't told this before I showed up. And I didn't have my speaker stands or totems to go with my speakers and poles. So I had to bring the subs up and just not use them. And then they had a list of songs you couldn't play. Cotton Eye Joe, Cupid Shuffle, uh, Save a Horse, or anything that made people stomp and jump. So, so no, no jump pain. around from House of Pain? Exactly. No crisscross. Nothing that would shake the chandeliers on the floor below. So I, I, Cupid Shuffle, that's not... That's not uh, jumping. That's moving, you know, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right. You know, you know, like a cha cha slide. Loud enough, it's got a loud enough baseline, I guess. They said there's certain, like you can't play that in our venue. Okay, cool. And as I really thought about it that night, I'm like, not that I really want to lean into a lot of the songs you asked for, but they're fairly common wedding songs. If someone asks for it, I'm obligated to play it. Unless on the do not playlist. So, and a lot more often than not, I've been, I've just said, no, I'm not available for ones in that venue, or I've only got my premium package available that day. It's this much money. Sorry, other DJs have my other gear. This is all I have open. Go for it, take it, or not. And more often than not, they'll pass. So I've kind of priced, made sure I don't have to be there. Well, yeah, and again, if you if, oh, the other thing you also just say, hey, I'm sorry, I don't service that venue. Be up front. I'm sorry, you know. It, it, it's one of the things that again, venue owners and managers they they want to do its best for their business too. They want their like we do. We want to make the client happy. We want to make the people happy. We want to make the guests happy for whatever the event is. And I know uh, both Matt and Jeff do a lot of school dances. They, you know, they want the kids happy when the kids saying, hey, you know, my junior prom or junior event was great. I can't wait to next year to have Jeff back or or Matt or uh, Dwayne or or whoever. And, you know, they they want the energy. They want the feel. They want that stuff. But some venue managers, you know, they kind of get in the way of that. And you have to you have to walk that fine line because you don't want to make the venue mad, but you don't want to make your client upset and you have to follow certain policies. And. That's one of the things also that communication I feel is very important with uh with with the person who hired you. If it's a couple, the bride and groom, if, if it's uh uh if it's the uh you know school or whoever is in charge is is that communication level. And one of the things also, this is the next thing we're gonna go into here for next question, is when you run into a uh difficult manager at a venue. Uh, you know, and we've run into them all. You know, we've run into people who are just, it could be a bad day for them. It's, they're not a people person. They, they, owners that shouldn't own facilities, you know, who are just total not nice. And, you know, other staff members are great and stuff like that. And you always work with great, great staff members, but sometimes you run into that owner, that manager who is not, you know, great to work with. Um, and you have a client that comes back to you and asks, Hey, do you go to this venue? Are you likely to go back to that venue? Are you are you likely to again shy away from that venue and say, "I'm sorry, I'm booked that day" or whatever? So, Jeff, I'm going to start with you. Again, I know you do a lot of different events. You do some corporate events. You do school events. If you have a venue that you, I'm sure you've run into that the manager there, if it's the owner or whoever, is not the most easiest to deal with. Do you do you go back there and you know just bite you know? Bite your tongue, be nice, give them pleasantries, and work it. Or do you say, "Hey, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm booked that day, or I just don't go back to that venue." What do you, what do you usually do? Well, I usually, you know, I I won't turn it uh, an event down unless it's something egregious. But um, I, I've never come across, you know, uh, someone who was uh, so bad that I did not want to go back. Um, I've run across a few that were very demanding. Um, and not a big of a deal. I usually go to the couple or go to the people that hire me and let them know 
these are the restrictions or these are the demands. Um, just let them know. And at the end of the day, the person who pays me is the most important person. Um, the event, the event manager, the event owner, um, they come in a far second, maybe third or fourth, you know, um, I'm more worried about the photographer than I am the event manager. Uh, the event managers are gonna, they're gonna be survive and see another day and, uh, they're getting plenty of money for an event. You know, uh, I, I'm more worried about the couple or yep. the people that hire me. And uh, so at the end of the day, you know, it's um, it, it just flows right off me if they're being negative or whatever. Uh, I don't let it bother me. And I try not to let it bother if it's a, a wedding, the couple, you know, I, I try not to even let them know about it unless it's something that that is affecting the day. Uh, then I will let them know this is happening because of, you know, this person or this. It's beyond this you. It's beyond your control. Yeah, and, you but know, I, I, bad, I usually try not to let it uh, let it out that you know th there's something bad going on, especially at a wedding. You want them to you want that day to look like it's the best day ever. You know, I don't want to approach them with any problems that I can't handle. So, and I I can say, Jeff, I do never think that anyone anyone would not be able to work with you. You're one of the nicest people I know here. Everyone here is really nice, but you're one of the nicest guys. You know, you and Dwayne and and, and Brentley and Matt. You're, you're so easy to work with uh, on my end. I can see, you know, why you're, you know, your professionals in a lot of venues would, would not want, would not, not want to work with you or not want to work with oh my guy. I can't say it right. Blah, 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 blah. It's, I'm it's difficult. Tuesday. They don't want to work with me. Yes. <laughs> we do not want to choose to work with you. I, and, make, the you know, I make the ceiling shake. Come on. <laughs> hey, you know what? Very, very venues like that. Um, but the thing is that, you know, again, we do run into those um, venue owners or managers. Again, it's a bad day. They have some policies that you don't agree with. So, Matt, I'm going to come to you. If you run into a venue uh, manager or a venue that is difficult to deal with, and, you know, are you, do you go ahead and take that uh, wedding or, or event? Or do you say, I'm sorry, I, I don't deal with that event, that, that venue? Or do you uh, just go there and just, just work it? So uh, there's one venue that I've put on the list that we will never go back to. Um, and that's because their sound levels are so ridiculous that it's not even worth it. Um, but I, that was, it's unfortunate because I have another one coming up in September there and it's going to be just awful. I know, but um, no subs, no subs. You have to I, I, like, it's a 55 or 60 and it's fully outdoors. And like, it's, it's terrible. Um, but if if I run into the situation where it's like a venue that I know is difficult, like where we did, uh, we had a, um, what was it? We had a wedding once at the San Diego like Wild Animal Park. It's not the zoo, but it's like a safari park type place, and they don't let you drive on property. Uh, you have to like load into their cargo van, and then there's only one of those cargo vans, so if there's multiple weddings, and at the end of the night you're waiting for two hours to get all your stuff loaded out uh, that so that's one that I'm just not happy to go back to. Uh, there's other ones that are like hotels with terrible loading elevators and it's on the 21st floor. So any of those, like maybe we'll go back, but it's gotta be at like a, you know, six, seven, 8,000 minimum or something, something like double my normal rate. So uh, that's like the only way I'd, I'd go back to those. And, uh, or, or we could do just like a small, small setup, like one cart load. Um, so those that's but like now that I've because I, I didn't used to really care like where they were getting married. I, it's always in my sub form submission. But now that I've been to a lot more venues over the past couple of years, I kind of know which ones I'm just going to send them a different version of my pricing that is just so inflated that if they say yes, then great. We'll make it happen. But if not, you know, I'm not trying to cut deals. OK, so Dwayne, what about you? If you run in, is there a venue? that you know of that is a a pain in the rear and or you know venue manager or staff there is you know just not the nicest and do you go to that venue or do you say hey i'm sorry this venue is uh you know not a place i prefer to go to uh pick another dj or again you go there and just bite your tongue you work the what you work the event and you just you know are professional and pleasant with the uh 
either the manager, staff, or whomever it is that uh, gives you the difficulty. And you do kind of like Jeff does and say, hey, you know, this is beyond my control. I have to follow this policy. I'm just letting you wear, aware that it's, you know, it's not me, my doing. Um, I need to do this. What, what do you usually do? So far, I've been lucky not to run into any difficult venues, but I have uh, ran to one that's real strict about what time the client can come in and set up and when they must leave. And each one of those clients never adhere to that timeline. So it's like I'm caught in the middle because, you know, the manager is telling me that's the last song. You got to cut it. But the client has this other idea going on. So I just, I still go to it, but I just let the couple know ahead of time. If I know something that this event, this um, place needs, you know, wants this to happen, I try to convey that to them to let them know that you need to check this out before we do it. So there's no going backwards and forth. No surprises. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that, you know, I don't know what, uh, what you guys, I'm going to, DJ Brentley here in a second, but uh, last song of the night, I always try to play early enough. That way it ends at the song ends. If we're ending at 11 o'clock, it ends at basically 11 o'clock or 11 or one the latest. Same thing if it's midnight or 10 o'clock, whatever the end time is. I don't mind a minute or so. Most facilities aren't going to care. But when you go, you know, another song, another song, another song, I know venue managers, we get very upset when DJs do that because they're paying their staff. Then they start running it overtime. That can cost a lot of money. So that's, I, I understand it, but also the 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 person, the leaser, the lease e of the uh, venue versus the leaser. The leaser is telling you you end this time. The lease e needs to end at that time, and us as the contractor for the lease e need to kind of follow that so we don't get ourselves in the bad <laughs> DJ pile. So DJ Brenly, what about you? What do you what do you do if you run into a Difficult venue. I know you have your favorite venue in the world, uh, but I'm sure there's some venues that you uh, have run into that has been very difficult. Do you work with them or do you say, hey, you know, no way? In the past day of, one thing, and I learned that, you know, the emotion part, like that would be kind of conveyed out of the Marbecca lessons. And Mitch Taylor, when he was doing some MC work with our our company, Pose the question, and whenever I run into a, and since that point, if I run into a difficult vendor or venue, I will straight up ask them, how is this going to better our couple's day? And when they give me the grumpy look, it's our, and I will say, straight out tell them, it's our responsibility to flawlessly execute their day to what they want. If what we're bickering about right now will not help them, then we need to drop it and move around. After that point, and if the venue manager is still kind of, you know, on something, I will tell the couple that, not to disrupt, but like, there's what we need to do to stay within the good graces of venue manager. So I will throw it back at the venue just a little, but in a very polite way. When it comes to going back to those venues, I'm not interested. And this, I'm not trying to sound cocky or out of line or out of pocket with it. But one, having a kid, if I can get, you know, I'm not going to sacrifice a day of being unhappy and working for somebody when I can spend that time, be better spending that time with my child or with a couple that would really want me, you know, wants me to be a part of it and the venue they selected will make sure their date is what they want. It's perfect for them. And the other side of it being, I don't have to book a wedding. I have enough club gigs, knock on wood, that if I don't choose to be a wedding, and I kind of wanted to prove it to myself over February, March, and part of April, is it worth me if I really just got fed up with doing weddings? Can I support me and my daughter comfortably not like i do with just weddings with all the weddings i do but is it a good fit to do this and when i came up with the answer is yes i make more than enough money djing at clubs i can now have a little bit more option to be selective with which weddings i'm taking 
what venues they're at, what vendors they're working with, and what they want out of what I produce. So I'm not getting the second marriage of two people that are 55 years old that don't want to hear anything past 1985. I've, you know, so it keeps me within my target demographic, the whole nine yards. And celebrations on the river and the Cargill room here in the cross, knock on wood, they refer me a lot because of what I do for my couples. And there's a couple of planners that grab me and ask me first and foremost before they hit anyone else up if I'm open. So we're talking about 25 and 26 for their couples right now while I'm really, fo and that's what I'm focusing on, that kind of client, that kind of couple that gets the whole nine yards of it all. The venue gets it so we can work and have a great time. And that, that's the hard part is that, you know, you find that work-life balance, but also making sure that, you know, you have kind of control of what kind of clientele you want to take. And, you yep. know, there's, there's nothing wrong with someone 55 years old on a second marriage, don't want to hear anything past 1985. Because, again, it it, it, it kind of look, it have you know, the bass music. And, again, it's, it's it's it can be a fun thing doing the all, you know, late 70s, early 80s rock. I have one of those weddings coming up on July 8th. It, it's it's To me, it's a little bit of a challenge because I got to remember those songs as well as knowing the newest songs from Dua Lipa, you know, so it, it's going to, exactly. you're going to have a few of those, but also they're, they're like, you know, rock and, you know, country and they're all like Skinner and stuff like that. But again, it's, 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 it's pleasant for me. It's pleasant because the fact that it's, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge because now I got to dig back into the memory banks and pull songs up and, and remember those songs. So a uh, couple things here, DJ Adrian E is chiming in. Uh, I saw you chime in a little earlier. I'm sorry to answer you earlier, but I appreciate you being here. Uh, first, he said, hello, gents. And uh, uh, he's referring to something we said is the this is the best Ben Stowe answer. Depends whether or not uh, or not I have been there or if it has the chain charge for the normal event. Plus, he says 65 decibels. What the? Which is, you know, some places are very low for sound levels. Um, and Those places need to be shut fun. down. What? They need to be shut down. They need to they be, shut, need to be down. shut down. They shouldn't be operating like that. It's just, it's, it's so bad business to not tell the couples or to make them think that six, because couples don't know what a decibel level is. They don't know. No. They don't have the chart in front of them what normal speaking volume is. And they hear, oh, 65. Yeah, that's. Oh, it's never been a problem for our other DJs, and it's always a party. And look at all these pretty pictures and how beautiful our venue is. And then, like, like they just—it's so misleading. Like, you work something out with your neighbors or the city or whatever the problem is, and fix this. It's two nights a week, Saturdays, Fridays, or Sunday. Like, even one night a week. Like, the neighbors can be fine until 10 p.m. I'm sorry. Like, it's just—it's so. Well, I'll, I'll tell you that this again is—it's it's a village ordinance, so it's the whole entire village. So the village board would have to vote for that. And then the other part of it is the residents have to say, we want to change. The residents around there do not want it. You're not talking about one person who is the stick in the mud. You're talking about probably maybe 30, 40 people in the area. And this is one of the things uh, Tracy ran into at that venue. We were doing the ceremony. Uh, they have a little grassy area out. The porch is up here. They have a grassy area out to the side with a tree and stuff like that. We were outside doing the ceremony and we, they were doing, you know, the vows, the vows and the police pull up. They got a phone call because they were talking too loud. And, you know, Tracy wanted to talk to the officer, the, the manager at the facility wanted to talk to the officer. And he said, Hey, you know, we're, we're within the sound level. And they're like, yeah, we know, but someone's got to call and complain. We got to show up. We got to, got to make sure we make contact. Say, hey, you know, are you doing it? Are you not doing it? You guys are doing it. You're not in trouble. It's not anything wrong, but we got to do our job too. So it, it's, it's, it's people in the area calling up and complaining about stuff. It happens, and unfortunately, we as professionals have to deal with it. And again, municipalities, yeah, you're right. Municipalities do not know what. 55 decibels as they see a number and it's arbitrary and they say, okay, Hey, that sounds great. 55 decibels, not knowing that like normal conversation is like 61, 62, 63 decibels. So when you say 65 see, decibels, that's a little bit higher than normal conversation. So that's not even yelling. And, you know, one it, thing I noticed though with that, 
One thing I've noticed, though, and it's with the decibel thing, it's a lot of these venues that popped up after the boom from 2020. And more, at least in my market, there are, I can think of about 20 different venues that literally opened up to catch up with the off time we had in 2020, like barns and venues that weren't even really ever meant to be venues decided that they're going to become a wedding venue and start doing this. Not really feeling everything out. So now they're like, well, we got this neighbor over here. We got to be wary of. And they'd never been a wedding venue before. So now they've got all these couples booked. And they didn't do their homework and research into finding it out. And that's where I've seen the biggest change in anyone with a lot of volume issue. Um, there's a couple other barns that are just outside of lacrosse that do have issues. And my other DJs have called me and said, like, dude, this manager is giving has a stick up there. I'm like, just deal with it, but go and talk to your couple, tell them we can't get louder than this. And it's those venues that are also assisting and giving our industry a really bad name. Like there's one venue in Hillsboro. Uh, it's the direct point between Lacrosse and Madison, basically. And they decided that they're going to change all the rules for DJs loading out, but not tell anybody until they show up the day off. So you have, if your event ends at midnight, you have to be completely out of the door in 30 minutes. So they're, if they're not telling you until the day we show up, at that moment, even with the pre-call or any conversation, they're just going out of their way to make our lives difficult. Those are the venues I'm steering completely clear of. And I'll even tell couples, like, from the get-go, if you're booking this venue, these are their rules. If you want to do X, Y, or Z, you may want to look somewhere else. And a couple of couples have actually bailed on said venue and gone to celebrations in Cargill here, which is, you know, again... There's a re their their customer service and everything else is at such a high level that everyone else is just kind of okay comparatively, but working with them and there are other venues in my market that are like that that really take the time. So I know I know you love celebrations and it's a beautiful looking venue. Um, one of the things also with this uh, with everything is there a venue that you love and if so. Would you share the name of that venue? I know celebrations is you, DJ Brentley. You know you love celebrations. That's probably your favorite uh, venue there yeah. in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And then Jeff, for you, if you have pick your favorite venue, you love going to over and over again. Is there a venue that you love the most? And if so, do you want? Can you share the name? Uh, uh I'd have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I caught you off guard um, on that one, huh? <laughs> you know, I don't really have a favorite event that you know I, I'd like to share a name. Uh, you know, they they all have their their um, you know positives and negatives, but um, yeah, the bigger the bigger ones are my more favorite uh, because they usually have easier load ins or you know something that you know that they deal with that on a regular basis. Uh, the smaller ones. You know that that's a, that's an afterthought. You know the load in, load out is an afterthought. You know they they might not have a sidewalk all the way up. You know, or they might not be handicap compliant. You know, stuff like that. You know, so yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really have a, a favorite that I can. I, I could shout out my cousin's um, event or his uh, wedding space over in uh, Kernersville, North Carolina, and that's uh, uh, a, a nice little facility that uh, it, it's pretty, it's great, but it's terrible for DJs because you have to run all the uh, all your sound through his speakers. Oh. <laughs> but but uh, other than that, you know, he's got a beautiful location over there. So that's uh, Dewberry Farm. But other than that, yeah, I don't okay. really have a favorite. Dwayne, do you have your favorite place? If so, would you care to share it? Uh, I don't have a favorite. No? Yeah. Yeah, no, none jumps out. It's just more so the the crowd is. I have a favorite crowd, but I don't have a favorite venue. Okay, Matt, what about you? Do you have a favorite place? And so, uh, hmm, a couple good ones. Um, hmm, uh. 
I, I don't know. I mean, I, I only really remember the bad ones. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the one that I met all the time, like anybody watching this, go get married there, Ole Hanson Beach Club, because uh, I'm on their roster of DJs, but uh, you can't book me directly for it. You just have to tell me you want me there on a cer certain date, and I can book myself on that date because I can just tell whoever's scheduling. Uh, I love that venue because it's an awesome place and it's uh, easy loading and it's just great uh, food and everything. But oh yeah, I do have a favorite. Uh, it's called Talega Golf Club. Uh, it's in San Clemente. It's on a golf course. The coordinator there is this guy, and he is phenomenal. He is so wonderful to work with. He's so on top of it. The food there, I will tell you, it's the best wedding food I've ever had. I've been there twice. Uh, we're on their preferred vendor list, so I got like three or four more this year. But I've the food there phenomenal and presentation it's incredible it's always plated they don't do buffets they're not that kind of place um dance floor is built in we can use uh fog haze sparklers literally anything um it's there's a couple gig logs i have from there and uh it's it's just it's an awesome place um the only thing i don't like is where the dj sets up is kind of squished a little bit because you're right next to a pillar so you kind of have to compact a little bit but now that i have the gravity stands I could kind of be a little bit more creative with my setup there instead of just uh, having to use a facade and, and tripods and all that. But that one's probably my favorite there. And then there's another one called, um, uh, it's called uh, uh, Venue by Three Petals in Huntington Beach. And uh, it's just a gorgeous place. They have this chandelier in the center that everybody puts these flowers on to make it look ridiculous. And uh, it's another one of those venues that's got a ton of power, they let you do anything. Uh, they actually have a built-in spider box that like permanently sits behind the stage that you tap into. It's just there are no regulations, no noise ordinance, nothing like go crazy. So, and that's how it should be. When, when people pay a lot of money for these venues, and venue is really expensive. Uh, when people pay the kind of money they're paying for these places, they shouldn't have to deal with restrictions. They should be able to do whatever they want. If they want to have a fire breathing dragon come in, they should, they should be able to, you know, if they're paying the price for it, just like venue should just make it happen. Um, so, and they do, they do allow actual pyrotechnics there with a fire marshal. Um, so they've had actual productions with pyro. Uh, it's just one of those places. So um, yeah. Those and are, that, those that's, are that, that makes life sometimes easier and also uh, prof uh, more profitable for you as a business owner too, because you could charge for those services. I like ones I could just drive right up to. <laughs> With that said, that's the end of the show for this, this week. Thank you all for tuning in again. If you haven't done so already, make sure you click the like, subscribe, and make sure you follow over here on Twitch. And uh, make sure you also you put down below a comment, critique, criticisms, questions, any tomfoolery or anything like that you want to say down below. We we're more than glad to answer stuff. We try to answer on the following show, following episode. And also, like I said before, if you know another DJ, tell them about the show. Have them come watch the show. And uh, this way uh, it helps us grow and helps us uh, become bigger and bigger. And again, everyone here is, uh, you know, veteran DJs giving their information with how they do things. And hopefully it helps you out as a DJ and makes us all uh, look better and overcome some uh, problems here and there. Other than that, everyone, you guys have a great time. Again, thank you all for being on the panel tonight. Thank you guys all. You guys have fun and enjoy yourselves.